Can't believe we're just sitting on, or I guess standing on this hill trying not to fall down looking at a painted red star. That's really cool. In some parts of the country, fascinating habitats attract specialized bird species. These places can be vastly different than the surrounding area and feel like an entirely separate world. We experienced this firsthand when we visited one of Southern Arizona's most popular birding destinations. Hey everybody, Derek and Ryan here from Badgerland Birding. We are heading up to Mount Lemon in Arizona to hopefully find some unique species that live there. So we are taking the winding roads all the way up. I'm trying to not die. I appreciate that. Mount Lemon is home to many unique bird species that can't be found anywhere else in the surrounding area. The high elevation of the mountain and the cool temperatures allow the water to collect and conifer trees to grow. Some of the birds we were hoping to see on the mountain included yellow-eyed juncos, high elevation flycatchers, and breeding warbler species. It just so happened that when we were in Arizona, one of the rarest birds in the country had been reported at Mount Lemon, a pine flycatcher. We of course also hope to get a look at this species as well. To get to the best habitat, we drove the road that meandered up the mountain. As we climbed in elevation with each turn, we made stops at some of the pullovers. One of them yielded a few western bird species, including lesser goldfinch, black-throated gray warbler, and broad-billed hummingbird. After more driving, we reached a spot where the road leveled out, and the rock and scrub were replaced by thick green woods. Here, we found a place to park and began our search. We're now at our first stop on Mount Lemon. I think it's over 7,000 feet of elevation where we're at now. I already saw a couple things on the way in and got some intel about the pine flycatcher, so we're gonna try to go find that and then see what else we can find on the way. Yeah, it's really cool up here. And there's calls I don't know coming from different places, so we'll see uh, what we can pull out as lifers. Also, there's no reception, so if we need extra intel, we're kind of screwed. But thankfully, we got what sounded like good directions for the pine. We started walking a trail leading to the base of a hill. The trees were alive with birds calling and flitting around. Some of the most chatty birds were the numerous broad-tailed hummingbirds. We saw these quick and energetic hummers all over the mountain, with some even tending to young. It's really hard to understand what's calling, so I'm hearing stuff from everywhere and I don't know exactly what it is until I get eyes on it. So um, it's been tricky so far, but there's a lot of cool stuff here. The only problem is it's so thick that it's uh, tough to get a look at. So very cool place so far, a lot of cool birds to find, but uh, not as much luck yet as I would have wanted. One of our first target bird species we found was the colorful painted red start. A breeding resident of the American Southwest, the painted red start is a beautiful bird with a black body, white undertail, white marking under their eye, red stomach, and white wing patches. Males and females look the same, and they are normally found in mountain forests with a nest on the ground. Painted red starts are known for flashing the patches on their wings and outer tail feathers, which is thought to startle insects that they can then attempt to catch. That was one of the ones I really wanted to see is the painted red start. Uh, just that gorgeous coloration, uh, really nice little movements that they make, and really in incredible to watch. Can't believe we're just sitting on, or I guess standing on this hill trying not to fall down looking at a painted red start. That's really cool. We began making our way up the steep hillside in search of the pine flycatcher, taking in the beautiful habitat surrounding us. I still can't get over how cool this place is, honestly. Arizona has so many amazing habitats to look through, even if you're not a birder. It's just so cool to be up here on this mountain with all these conifers and it smells so good and everything's gorgeous. It's just an amazing place. As we continued our ascent, we encountered a few more southwestern specialty species, including a few cordier and flycatchers, as well as a species that we were extremely excited to find, the yellow-eyed junco. The yellow-eyed junco is a medium-sized bird with a rust-colored back, gray body, and striking yellow eye. They inhabit select areas of the American Southwest, and their range also extends into Central America. 
Yellow eyed juncos feed mostly on seeds, insects, and arachnids, and they can often be seen feeding on the ground, picking through leaf litter. They are generally a higher elevation species, normally found between around 4,000 and 11,500 feet of elevation in forests. Nests are made on the ground and are cup shaped. Eventually, we reached the top of the bluff where the pine flycatcher had been reported. We spotted a few acorn woodpeckers that were quite entertaining to watch. We made it to the top. Ryan's looking at... Life for acorn woodpecker. Yeah, he's, we've seen it earlier, but this is, uh, this is a nice one perched up, so he's getting a good look at it. Just reached the top, so now we're going to take the trail this way. See if we can hear that pine flycatcher calling. After searching the area for a while, we were about to give up when Derek found something. Got a flycatcher. I was just taking a break, um, and the coordinates in the place where we, the coordinates were. And it's up here. It looks like it could be the bird, but it's hard to say. It's very tiny. By matching this flycatcher's call with pine flycatcher recordings, we were able to correctly identify it as our target bird. I mean, it's pretty incredible that we were able to talk with people, get some GPS coordinates where we have really spotty slash no reception, stake out a place with limited time, and end up actually seeing the bird, especially a bird that small. Because even though it's a um, flycatcher, I didn't expect it to be that tiny for some reason, especially at the top of a tree. Like, it really was not, like, the tippy top. It was just kind of in there. So really glad that we were able to see it, especially with, um, you know, not having all the time today, and especially in a cool habitat like this. After the pine flycatcher eventually took off, we looked around the top of the bluff for anything else that might be up there. We had some knockout views of yellow-eyed juncos and a hilarious interaction with a broad-tailed hummingbird. He thought it was a flower. Well, I just had a really cool experience with a yellow-eyed junco and a hummingbird. It actually thought the little red knob on my tripod was a flower, so it tried feeding from it. How are you feeling, buddy? You're good. I'm ready to get some warblers. Let's get some warbs. Yeah, you think we'll get some Get some warbs, warbs. yeah. I think so. Let's do it. After making our way back down to the main road, we turned our attention to finding the warblers that call Mount Lemon home. We heard an unfamiliar call and traced it to one of the birds that we wanted to see the most, the red-faced warbler. The red-faced warbler is a strikingly beautiful bird with a gray back, lighter underside, red hood, and black bonnet. Their range extends into the United States in the summer during breeding season, and they are normally found in forests above 6,500 feet of elevation. Red-faced warblers nest on the ground and feed mostly on insects, often seen foraging in the middle and upper branches of trees. One unique fact about red-faced warblers is that they only molt once per year, therefore their breeding and non-breeding plumage is the same. Those red-faced warblers were incredible. That was the one I wanted to see the most, so I'm really happy we found those. They're ground nesters, and so if they have nests, they'll be going to the ground. And these were definitely having, um, carrying food, and also singing while carrying food, which is kind of impressive. Near the red-faced warblers, we also got nice looks at Plumbius vireos, as well as another southwestern warbler that we were hoping to find. Just had another one of the warblers that are the easiest to find on Mount Lemon, the Grace's Warbler, and they have that bright yellow throat, and we were both very excited when we heard something that was different, looked up, saw it briefly, and then we were able to see it a little bit more later, but not much. Very quick bird, but really cool find. Very quick indeed. It was like, every time I thought I was on it, it would just dart somewhere else, but got some clips of it. With little time left before we had to leave, we headed toward Rose Canyon Lake, to see if there was anything different near the water. That area had a few species we hadn't encountered yet, including a Virginia's warbler that we heard, but never could manage to get eyes on. Also in the vicinity was a species we were very excited to find, the pygmy nuthatch. 
This species was a lifer for both of us, and it gave us surprisingly nice views. After finally making our way to the lake and taking in the beautiful view, our time was up and we had to leave the mountain. I have to say that Mount Lemmon is one of the most beautiful and unique places we visited in Arizona. It would have been nice to have even more time there to see what other species were around its vast hills, canyons, and forests. Hopefully we will get a chance to come back in the future and get an entire day to spend exploring Mount Lemmon. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.